What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about more Star Wars news. But before we do get into that, remember, hit that subscribe, like, and notification bell. So you're always in the know on everything Star Wars. Don't forget to have a membership and a merch store. Without further ado, let's get into today's topic. Now, there may have been many elements that have somewhat been out of place or for the animated Star Wars show, The Bad Batch's head writer, Jennifer Colbert, has perfectly talked about why they fit in the story and being told on actually Dig Up a Dispatch podcast. Now, when asked what it was like to explore these elements in the Bad Batch career tied together, why Palpatine's story fits in the actual show. And this is what she had to say. We started the series with cloning on Kamino. It was very different experience to the cloning that's happening on Tantus. Cloning has been a huge part of the show. Our characters are clones. It's something that they're familiar with and it matters to them. But... That was a fun thing to explore because it's something we had questions with and we actually had to get answers to some of the things, but not everything because they are still mysteries out there. Now, with elements introduced in Star Wars is the Bad Batch involving cloning, of course, the story has become the centerpiece for other Star Wars projects. Now, the most obvious connection to the Bad Batch has been in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Now, Project Nucromancer undoubtedly refers to Palpatine's attempts at lengthening his life after Return of the Jedi, which come to fruition in The Rise of Skywalker. Now, Project Nucromancer we know was first mentioned by name in The Mandalorian Season 3. Now, this marks another show that the Bad Batch has another connection to with the elements around cloning and the M-Count with Omega and Grogu all tying together further serve the setup of Palpatine's eventual revival, which we see, like I said, in The Rise of Skywalker. Now, with hearing Colbert's comments, it definitely connects a lot of the stuff that we've gotten in The Bad Batch to The Mandalorian and The Rise of Skywalker stuff so far, but there are other stories that still have mysteries to be solved that they might incorporate in other projects because again you have to leave that door open so we can explore things furthermore now when it comes to omega and grogu we know that they are very vital and important to this timeline of the story meaning that omega in the beginning of everything is so important because her m count is so high and we see that importance now with dr hemlock now having to retrieve her back because again they do have that positive test that ended up being omega's blood sample that shows her m count was high the same way with grogu even after the events of Return of the Jedi and in The Mandalorian, we see his M count is high. And that's why you see Moff Gideon going after him because he understands the same thing that Palpatine understood as well when it came to the cloning aspects of making a clone of one another. So there is a lot in store that they have still to tell when it comes to these stories. But overall, guys, I think when you hear the writer talking about when it comes to Palpatine and the connection with the Bad Batch, it lays it all in on how they're utilizing the cloning aspects on the difference between how it was on Camino to Mount Tannis, and we're seeing the very early stages of that right in front of our very own eyes. Thank you so much for tuning into today's video, guys. For more Star Wars content like this, make sure to hit that subscribe, like, and notification bell so you're always in the know on everything Star Wars. Don't forget to have a membership and a merch store, and I'll catch you guys in the comment section and in tomorrow's video.